Welcome to the second video in our intro to working with Oracle Cards series. Hopefully you've watched the first video and um, if you haven't up to that point, you've cleansed your deck, um, you've begun reading the book that accompanies the deck that you want to work with for this series so that you're getting to know a little bit about the history of the deck and some of the energies that are associated with the deck. So hopefully you've started on that part of the journey. Um, and now we can talk about starting to work with the cards themselves. Now, just as with tarot, in, in which I'm, I encouraged you to begin a tarot journey, uh, a tarot journal. Yes, it is a journey as well with oracle cards too, but um, we're going to do the same thing with oracle cards. So what you want to do is get a journal of some sort or a notebook or start one on your laptop or computer or whatever you're using a way to document your journey with this deck and um, and with what you're learning and getting to know about the deck. This is a really helpful tool, especially as time goes by for you to go back and reference. And it's also really amazing to see just how far um, you've come on your journey with Oracle cards, but also um, what you've learned and what you've come to know about those cards from when you first started documenting, working with them. So once you have your journal with you, um, I would invite you to, for the first entry, discuss, or not discuss, but write about perhaps why you chose this deck and, and the energy that you feel from this deck after looking at the cards for the first time. So that's going to involve um, taking your deck, and this is the Oracle of Shadows and Light, and actually looking at each card in the deck. Really take time to look at them. And once you've gone through all of the cards, and each Oracle deck will have a different number of cards, so don't, you know, it's not a set number. It's depending on, um, I've found in my experience, usually the numerological association that the author slash artist liked the best for their deck. And you will see if, you're, if the author that you really enjoy puts out several decks, it's usually the same number that they're using over and over again. So spread out your cards, you know. Um, set some solo time aside to do this and have enough space that you can really set the cards out and look at everything. So once you've set them all out, write down in your journal the first feelings, the first words, the first thoughts that come to you as you look at the cards all together as a whole. Then what I would encourage you to do Let's take some time to center and ground yourself, just a few moments, and I've talked about that in another video that you can find on my channel. It's really just about breathing and getting calm and feeling yourself connected to the earth so that you're very focused and centered. Um, and then choose to have an interchange with the deck. Ask what the deck as a whole um, has to say to you, what the message is for you, and, and how it wants to help you, and how it wants to communicate with you. Um, and then write down what you get from that session of talking to the deck as a whole, not just the individual cards. Um, it's a beautiful way to get a feel for the deck um, right off the bat and to kind of understand what the journey is going to be about, or at least the beginning of the journey is going to be about together. So then once you've done that, now it's time to shuffle the cards. Um, and this is a complete, there's no wrong way to shuffle your cards. This is a completely um, individual expression and uh, individual working as far as shuffling the cards. So take the time to shuffle your cards and do that however feels right for you. And if you're not sure what feels right for you, you're just starting working with cards, um, just start fooling around and see what feels right. You might be shuffling, you might feel like shuffling's wrong, and you just want to kind of work with your cards this way. Maybe you feel like it's really important to cut your cards, cut the deck a certain amount of times. For me, I cut my deck three times. So really, this is another way that your energies are coming into contact with the deck's energies and you're getting to know each other. So really look at that. Don't rush this process. Really experience the shuffling. Listen to any words that come up. Any thoughts, write those down if you are doing the, the Oracle Journal, which I really invite you to do. 
I can't tell you enough how much um, my Oracle and Tarot card journals mean to me. So once you've come to a space where you know you're feeling like the deck is telling you, okay, you've shuffled me enough, I'm ready. Then we can start working on our first spread with, or with our Oracle deck. So again, this is exciting because um, with tarot, there really is, you, you have to get to know your majors, your minors, and your court cards before you can really dive in completely. But we can dive in right away with the Oracle deck. So this is something that's completely personal. You'll decide the question that you want to ask. But you might want to ask a question, um, something like this. At this time, what is your message for me? What is the main thing that you want me to know? And then go ahead and draw the card. Okay, so from this deck, the, the main message that the deck wants me to know right now is the Carnivorous Flower Fairy. A tempting offer has a high price. Now, if you're new to working with Okay, so we've drawn our card, and um, as I said, I have the Carnivorous Flower Fairy. Here is where I really encourage you to not just grab the book first, even though, as we talked about in the previous video, it is definitely very valid and um, worth your time to read the book that comes along with your Oracle deck. This is when it's really important to access our intuition as we're looking for the answer about what the message, in this case, what the message the deck has for me at this time is. Um, whatever question you've chosen to ask your deck before you've drawn your card, don't just jump to the book right away because that that becomes an ego place in our mind where we think I can't find I can't you know find or hear the answer so I've got to look it up and then we get stuck in always looking the answer up instead of asking and talking to the card and the energy associated with the card. So first of all, before I start talking to the card, I just want to look at the picture itself. I want to look at what's in the card, the symbolism that's there, what's sticking out to me. So I'm just going to show you so you can see the card. As I'm looking at this card and thinking about the question that I've asked the deck, what's sticking out to me is the well, I'm just going to point is the Venus flytrap right here, the plant with the teeth attached to it. She's so beautiful and she looks so sad, and yet there's a lot of teeth that's coming along with being in communication and in uh, in life with her. So that's what's really sticking out to me is, are those teeth. Now that, I've just, now that I've looked at that and I've allowed my mind to kind of take a step back from having to have the perfect answer and just actually look at what's in the card. Okay, so I know what's sticking out to me, the teeth that are on the Venus flytrap. Now I'm going to internally, or you can do this out loud if you're by yourself and you feel comfortable, talk to the card and the energy with the card and ask what the message is. Okay, so what is your message for me right now at this time. What is it that you want me to know? And then just listen to what comes to you. you know, look at the card and listen to what comes to you. If you're still just really picking out the teeth, that's what's sticking with you, or whatever it is you happen to see in, in the card that you're working with, um, don't get go into a fear place with, oh no, I'm not going to be able to talk to the cards or hear an answer. Just be quiet and listen. And if this is your first time working with the cards, it's going to take a little bit to be, feel comfortable enough to hear the answer and to actually trust that, that is the answer. Eventually you will hear an answer of some sort or a message or you'll see an image or a thought will come to you that makes sense to where you are in your life right now. Um, drawing this card, I know in that is what's going on in my own life at this time. Um, there is someone in my life that's looking to drain me of energy and resources. And um, it's now up to me to stop being the victim and to stop agreeing to be in this kind of relationship and to step back and say that that's not working for me anymore. So that's a message that I've received from the card. I can also tell by the fact that I've drawn this card that this deck is really wanting to help me work on developing my strength and standing in my own power and not allowing others to take from me and to feed off of the energy that I have, um, helping others to heal, but healing myself as well. It's a very, very important message for me right now. So you can see that by just taking the time out to speak with the card, to look at the card, I've then been able to really 
get the answer that the, that the deck is trying to give me. I've heard it quite clearly without having to read the meaning in the book. If you really are feeling stumped and like you have to look the meaning up, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead, look up the meaning. This is card number 38. So a lot of what this is talking about is a narcissistic person, workplace, or belief system that is demanding, all-consuming, and almost cult-like in its practices and ethics. It is a dangerous alliance to contemplate. Do not get too close. Observe and learn if you must. Do not become an experiment. They will bite you and they will try to take from you. It is their very nature. So you can see that from the meaning, you don't get a concrete, this relates to this situation and this is always the answer. It's a general meaning to help get your intuition and your creative juices flowing and discovering the answer for yourself. So you can see that even when you consult the book, you're not going to get the perfect, easy answer that perhaps you're hoping you'll get. Okay, this is why the book, the books are always beneficial, but they're not what's actually divining the answer. That's your intuition, your psychic abilities, and your higher self. So now that you have spent this time with the deck, um, you can choose if you feel that this is enough work for one sitting um, to close your time with the deck and working with the energies associated with the deck. I prefer to do that by thanking and honoring the deck and the energies. And I'm um, just letting them know that our, our session together, working on these issues together has closed for the time being. And then I'm going to go back to my daily life. This just helps. It's a very, it just makes it clear that I can go about my day and be grounded. And if there are messages coming in from them, I can receive in a way that's not disruptive. So if you feel like that, it's time for you to end this session now, then go ahead and do that. Um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about and working on larger card spreads with our oracle decks and getting comfortable with divining answers from them. If you feel like you're ready to go on to that video, um, I will have that up soon. And if not, um, take all the time that you need to spend with this video to feel comfortable with working with this. And I really, really encourage you to spend the time um, working on an oracle card journal. I cannot tell you enough the benefit that, that, that I've experienced in my life from that. Um, and that other people that I've talked to who have done the same really enjoy being able to look back and have a documentation of that experience, but also um, lessons learned and getting to know the decks in certain ways. So really work on um, spending time with your Oracle card journal as well. Um, it can become a very healing experience for you. So I will see you in video three of the Intro to Oracle Card series. Thanks for watching. Bye.